Welcome back to Ame Reads. I'm Teresa Garcia, or Amehan Arashi. This weekend, I will read a story for you from Louise and Yuan C. Kuo's collection, Chinese Folk Tales. This story is The Clever Wife, a Han Folk Tale. There were quite a few Han folk tales about a clever woman, whereas the man was often a dullard, or at least no match for her. China was predominantly a man's world, yet there were times when a woman was the actual power behind the throne. Occasionally, she was the sovereign. As a wife, mother, or mother-in-law, she frequently exerted a powerful influence on the family. Even as a daughter, she could be forceful, one such instance was the famed heroine Mulan. Unusually skillful and clever in swordsmanship, she went to war instead of her sick father, who, having no son, had trained her since childhood in the martial arts. And Si Shi, a woman of rare beauty, helped to bring about the downfall of a kingdom by concealing her cleverness with feminine wiles. It is interesting to see how the magistrate in this story thought he was clever, but how the woman outwitted him. There was a man from Chekang province who married a very clever woman. She was exceptionally capable and solved all their problems, no matter how difficult. Thus they gradually became prosperous. He was so happy to please his wife as well as glorify her, he wrote a poem on red paper and posted it in front of his door, as was the custom for announcements such as marriage, birth, etc., red paper being the color symbolic of happiness. Which family can compare with mine? Neither help nor favors need I beg from mankind. One day a magistrate happened to pass their front entrance and noticed the poem. Who in all the world would be that proud and boastful, he wondered. On his return to the magistracy, he decided to send two petty officers to fetch the master of the house. Ay, ah, what have I done? What's wrong? Something serious, I'm sure he told his wife when he learned of the summons. But after only a moment's thought, his wife realized that it must have something to do with the poem on their door. You were in such high spirits when you wrote the poem. Since it has already created trouble, just follow the officers. Luckily, it's only a trivial matter. If there are any difficulties, we can talk about them later. He accompanied the officers and appeared before the magistrate, who said, the poem on your front door expressed great arrogance. It seems that you alone can accomplish all things. Now then, I'll ask you to do three things. The first is to weave a cloth as long as the road. The second, to brew a quantity of wine as big as the ocean. And the third, to raise a pig as heavy as the mountain. If you can accomplish these, I'll pardon you. But if you fail, don't blame me for giving you severe punishment, the magistrate warned intent on giving the fellow a lesson to remember. All this trouble, a yah, it's my own fault, he thought as he bowed low and left. He was very glum as he trod homeward to relate everything to his clever wife. Don't be a fool, she laughed. Why should you be so afraid? Tomorrow you can report to the magistrate. How could I possibly go back to him, he asked her. Just reply that you will be able to accomplish what he wants. But how? You only have to bring a ruler, a measuring bowl for rice, and a kitchen scale. When you see the magistrate, just say, she whispered in his ear, I'm sure he won't make any trouble for us. After listening to what his wife had whispered, he went to the magistrate and said, I'll be able to carry out all of the three things you asked. But first, will your honor please use this ruler to measure the road so I can know how long to weave the cloth? And I must ask your honor to measure the quantity of water in the ocean by using this standard measuring bowl so that I can brew the wine accordingly. And again, please your honor, use this scale to weigh the mountain so I can raise a pig as heavy as the mountain. As he was talking, he gave the ruler, bowl, and kitchen scale to the magistrate who accepted them in silence. What an oaf this man is! How could such a simple, foolish-looking fellow have figured that out? He wondered. So he asked, in a soft, low voice, Confidentially, who taught you the answers? 
It was my wife's good counsel, the man answered truthfully. The magistrate nodded and said, You are indeed fortunate to have such a clever wife. I'm not going to bother you any further. And that was the Han folk tale, The Clever Wife. Now, I particularly like this story because it involves the use of quick thinking and logic and a little bit of um, thinking outside the box. Who has time or energy to measure a road or measure the ocean or weigh a mountain? Until next time, I'm Teresa Garcia or Amehana Arashi. And this has been Ame Reads. Happy reading.